how to study cns which books to study how to memorize the drugs and which topics are high yield in cns pharmacology cns is a huge and high yield topic it is not only tricky conceptually but also very difficult to retain so in this video i'm going to share five tips on how to master drugs in cns pharmacology tip five is the most important for undergraduate students so watch till the end assalamu alaikum i'm dr sarish safar and i welcome you to keto pharmacology now on to the tips tip number one cns is very well discussed described in Lippincourt Pharmacology. Having said that, Big Katzing and Mini Katzing are also very good to follow. But Lippincourt excels because it has a very student-friendly interface. It has multiple pictures that make it very easy for you to understand and retain the concepts. Tip number two, memorize the neurotransmitters. You need to know which neurotransmitters are excitatory, which neurotransmitters are inhibitory, functions are they producing, and what disease will result when they are in excess or in deficiency. Tip number three, cover big cadsing for certain topics. For example, there are certain drugs and anxiolytics, the newer drugs, which are not described very well in Lippincott or Review Katzen. Certain parts of alcohol intoxication, the differentiation between the treatment for alcohol dependence or alcohol withdrawal is not separately described in the review books. Moreover, the treatment of Parkinson's, especially the detail about development with the levodopa and various routes with which levodopa can be prescribed is not described in Lippincott or Review Katzen at all. If you are aiming for distinction, you need to understand these concepts in detail and read these things from Big Katzen. Similarly, antipsychotics, drug-induced Parkinsonism, various movement disorders, these are certain topics that are not completely described or well covered in the review. Do refer to Big Katzen for these topics. Tip number four, high yield topics, anxiolytics, what is the difference between benzodiazepines and barbiturates, what are the newer anxiolytics which do not cause sedation, what are orexin substitutes, what are the differences between between buspirone and benzodiazepines, what is the difference between alcohol dependence and alcohol withdrawal and what are the treatments for them, what are the various opioids, mixed opioid antagonist agonists, what are the clinical uses of opioids, what are journal anesthetics, which journal anesthetics can be used and which journal anesthetics cannot be used in intracranial injuries, what are the local anesthetics, what are the differences between the adverse effects of amide and ester local anesthetics, what are the different drugs used for the treatment of Parkinson's. What are the differences in the effects that are treated by the anticholinergics and the effects that are treated by the dopamine agonists? What is drug-induced Parkinsonism and how it is treated? And the list goes on. Tip number five, understand the concept of suppression and stimulation of CNS. A basic thing that we understand is CNS disease is caused either by overstimulation or because of oversuppression of the brain. For example, anxiety, overstimulation, panic disorder, overstimulation, psychosis, overstimulation, mania, overstimulation, epilepsy overstimulation in cases where the cause of the disease is over excitation of the brain there are two strategies number one you decrease the excitatory neurotransmitter you block the excitatory transmitter number two you increase the inhibitory transmitter alternatively if the cause of the disease is over suppression of the brain for example depression there is deficiency of excitatory neurotransmitters or anesthesia or comatose patients because of excess of for example alcohol or benzodiazepines or any any other drug that is causing CNS suppression. In such cases, the treatment strategy would be either to number one, increase the excitatory transmitters, number two, decrease the inhibitory transmitters. I hope these tips will help you in understanding and memorizing the CNS pharmacology. If you liked it, please subscribe. For more content, follow these links.